So uh, Radian is the one that um, I'm surprised every semester how few people are aware of it. Um, so everyone here knows the angle Radian, right? Right? You've been using Radian since geometry or whatever. The word Radian is not a new word to you. Can someone tell me how it's defined? How do we define the angle radian? Using the unit circle. We do use a unit circle, yes. So if you have a unit circle, so let me write it here. Definition of radian. So you know, if I asked you to convert some number in degrees to radian, everyone here will be able to do that. I, I don't think I'm doubting that. So if you have a circle, and let me just draw an angle. Let's say you have an angle that looks like this, and maybe there's even a symbol like this. How much is this angle in degrees? 90 degrees. How much is it in radians? Pi over 2. Everyone here knows that. This is not a surprise, right? The, but this is my question when I'm asking about the definition of radian. Can someone explain why it's pi over 2? Why? So for 90 degrees, there's no real reason why. It's like asking, why is a one, full one full circle 360 degrees? Like why, you know, if I'm asking why it's uh, 360 degrees, at the end of the day, that's a question without a, a good answer. Because it's, uh, somebody picked 360 degrees. They could have as easily picked 200 degrees. They could have picked a you know, thousand degrees. But somebody at some point in the history picked 300 degrees, and that's why one full circle is 360 degrees. And it's, that's actually indicated in the name also. Whenever you see, uh, whenever in units you see the symbol degree, whenever you see this, it's an indication that this is a somewhat arbitrary unit. This is an indication that is, an, uh, let me call it, arbitrary arbitrary convention. So everyone in the world agrees to call one full circle 360 degrees. But that's a really the only reason one full circle is 360 degrees. So everyone in the world agrees that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. But that's the only reason zero degrees Celsius is zero degrees Celsius. There's no other scientific reason why it's zero degrees Celsius is zero degrees Celsius. So whenever you see the, this phrase degree in a unit, it's an indication that um, sort of like we have no better reason for defining this unit. So we are going to set some um, uh, convention, set some standard reference. So that's what this degree is referring to. When you look at, look at radian, and depending on what kind of geometry teacher you had, it's been emphasized to you, you don't call it degrees. You don't call it pi over 2 degrees radian. Like that, if you say that, that's wrong, right? You say pi over 2 radian. So with radian, there is no degree. So it's a non-arbitrary unit. There is a definite reason why it's pi over 2. So can someone tell me why it's pi over 2 and not, I don't know, pi over 4? OK, I think you're bringing in cosine and sine, which is defined using the unit circle, you know, x and y coordinate. I do like to avoid bringing in cosine and sine, because we don't need to. Yeah, can someone explain why this is pi over 2 without using any trigonometric functions? Yes. OK, let me ask you this question then. Why is 180 degree pi? So what Ali is saying is that you know this from here to here, so essentially a straight line, that this 180 degrees corresponds to pi. But still the same question. Why is it pi? Why not 2 pi? Why not 4 pi? Asia. Yeah, so one radian is equal to where the arc length is equal to radius. And the key word that I want to highlight here is the arc length. 
So radian is a, a unit of angle that's defined using the arc length of the unit circle. So what Asia was saying was, um, so, so unit circle has radius of one, right? And imagine going along the you know, circle, and if you reach up to a point where it's one, exactly you know, in the unit that you're measuring, one um, in arc length, then you stop at this point, and let me erase all of this. And you can define angle this way. Like this is a way of defining angle, right? If you define it by how, how much length of an arc length did you have to go? And this angle is defined by how much, this angle is defined by the arc length itself. So essentially this is turning um, angle measurement into length measurement, which has non-arbitrary unit. Am I describing correctly? Yeah. So now I would like to make this a little bit general. So you can start out with a unit circle, and if you start out with a unit circle, then the non-arbitrary convention you are using to define the angle here is we say the angle is equal to the length of the, the, the you know, the length of the, well, the arc length. <laughs> That's the word, right? Length of the fraction of a circle that you are taking. Uh, let me make it a little bit more general. So let's say instead of dealing with a unit circle, we have, um, we have um, a circle of radius r. Mm, sorry, I think I meant to use black. Uh, instead of unit circle, we have a circle of radius r. Now, when I change the size of the circle, so it's now you know, circle of radius r. It might be bigger than unit circle, it might be smaller than unit circle. This angle that we, um, that we, let me throw it in here. This angle theta that we called before one radian. Um, does the angle change when I change the size of the circle? No, right? It's all proportional, so it doesn't, size doesn't change. Now, if I simply said, so let me label the arc length with the symbol L. If I simply try to say this is equal to arc length, now it won't work. Because, um, so as you make the circle bigger, the arc length gets longer, right? So we have to modify this a little bit. Instead of, have, have, instead of just having the arc length, we have to modify this portion so that It'll, the formula we will come up with will work for any size of circle. Any suggestions how we would modify this? Tickle, how would we modify this? Yeah, divided by radius. It comes from your intuition. Your intuition says that these two are proportional, right? So. Um, as you double the radius, this would double, and you don't want the angle to double. So you're dividing by radius. So th th I mean, I think this is the reason I'm surprised every semester when people don't know this. Because when I learned this, this made so much sense that I felt like once you learn this, you would never forget it. But a lot of people do forget it, that's why I'm surprised every semester. But, so this is the definition of radian. So when, radian is, um, so, Radian, it's actually a unitless quantity because the way it's defined is it's defined as a ratio of the lengths. So radian is a, um, it's actually unitless. So when I say some angle is you know, one radian, I'm saying it's just one. So when you're doing calculations, radian is sort of an optional unit. You might write it down to make it clear that you're talking about an angle. But if you didn't write it down, you wouldn't have made any mistake because it's a ratio of two lengths. Any units that were there cancels out. This is in contrast with the degrees. With the degrees, if you ever um, omit the word degree, whatever it is you wrote down would just be wrong because you have no reference. But with the radian, that's what makes the radian non-arbitrary. And the reason I want to spend a little bit of time on this is to emphasize that all the formulas that we are going to write down regarding circular motion, anything dealing with the angles, we are sort of going to assume that you are using radians because this is the natural unit to use. There will be some formulas that if you try to write it down in degrees, 
it'll just be wrong. But if you assume that all the angles we write down are numerically in radians, then all these formulas will be right. So one of those formulas is what you saw in the lecture last Thursday, where I said this r times delta theta, the radius times this angle delta theta is equal to this arc length here, right? That's the distance travel. And what I was claiming there was that this distance was the radius times delta theta. Do you see where that is coming from, from this definition of radian? Right? Take the theta is equal to L over R. I want L, not theta. So you solve this for L. So from this, you get L is equal to theta times R. And that's what you have there. And if you, so if you remember this definition of radian, then it's a really simple matter to go from knowing the angle and radius to knowing the arc length. There's no complicated trigonometric function to, to deal with. There's no fractions to take. It's just the <laughs> angle times the radius. But this formula will only work if, uh, if this theta is in radians. This theta, it must be in radians. If it's in degrees, then you have to go through complicated fractions again. 